Hi everybody and welcome to our Monday TNT all the way here from Panga in Thailand. Now there's been one huge story and it happened on Saturday but uh, still worth reporting. Now we still don't know a lot and if I go through the news this morning there's not that much more information. Now the headlines only tell us so much. Passenger dies mid-flight after litres of blood erupts from his mouth and nose. Flight from hell. Husband 63 dies beside his wife when litres of blood shoot out of his nose and mouth. A man dies on Lufthansa flight after blood gushes from his nose. A, a new virus asks E-Turbo News. Blood death of a Lufthansa passenger. A tragedy on Lufthansa flight from Bangkok to Germany. I mean a horrific situation and apparently it was just chaos in the cabin of that plane but uh, it did return back to Bangkok where the uh, the well, lifeless man was taken off the plane. Now exactly why he was as sick as he was or what he was suffering from is yet to be determined but given the severity of what happened to this poor gentleman I think we'd all like to know. Let's go to uh, the actual story as reported by news.sky.com man dies on Lufthansa flight after coughing up litres of blood and the man has died after coughing up litres of blood on board a flight from Bangkok to Munich passengers have said and the German national said to be aged 63 looked ill as soon as he and his wife boarded the Lufthansa plane on Thursday according to witnesses and the man was sweating heavily and appeared to be struggling to breathe but his partner told the crew he was safe to fly and tired after running to catch the flight Flight. A passenger called Martin Misfelder said the man's condition rapidly deteriorated soon after takeoff and began spitting blood into a bag before it began gushing out of his mouth and nose. He said it was absolute horror, everyone was screaming. He said the man lost litres of blood and the walls of the plane were splattered. And flight attendants spent around 30 minutes trying to resuscitate the man before he was declared dead. Literally, that's as much as we know, despite me having a good look this morning for some later information, despite this incident happening well, apparently back last Thursday. It would have been a very unsafe situation for those flight attendants, uh, let alone horrific for all the passengers in the plane. Now, I think it is important that we do follow up this story and uh, I'll keep on searching to try and find out if there's any explanation to why the man uh, had such an appalling condition and was, well, even allowed to board the flight. A good news story to start our uh, Monday, the start of the week, uh, certainly after that last story. Remember that young eight-year-old who was going to kite surf across the Gulf of Thailand. Well, he's done it. And we go to patiamail.com. Eight-year-old Shane Promwan makes waves as youngest windsurfer to cross the Gulf of Thailand. And it says, in an astonishing feat of determination and skill, eight-year-old Shane has etched his name into water sports history by becoming the youngest person ever to windsurf across the Gulf of Thailand. Well, it wasn't quite windsurfing, it was kite surfing. And he covered 107 kilometres. It marks a significant milestone, not only in his burgeoning career, but also in the annals of extreme sports. And after two previous attempts thwarted by unfavourable wind conditions, Shane's third endeavour proved to be the charm. And Shane completed the epic crossing in just four hours and ten minutes, setting a new record for windsurfers of any age. It even surpassed a time recorded by a jet skier. And vessels equipped with ambulance capabilities and safety measures accompanied him. Now, interestingly, he was going to go from Patia, I think Jom Tiem Beach, to a place near Hua Hin. Looks like he went in the other direction uh, from surf spot in Hua Hin, culminating in a triumphant landing at the Patia Kite Surfing Club Lung Chat in Na Jom Tiem Beach. And reflecting on the momentous occasion, uh, Shane's father, Sam, expressed his overwhelming emotion, saying when Shane finally landed, I cried a little and hugged him tightly. I felt super proud. Well done to Shane and all the support team there. Uh, quite a milestone. Maybe there's a ferry operator that would like to find out a bit more information about how you cross the Gulf of Thailand safely. Uh, just an invitation too to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. That would really help. We won't send you any boring emails. We 
won't ask you to pay anything. Uh, all you have to do is subscribe. Maybe even click that like button while you're down there. Now we'll go to this next story from BangkokPost.com. 6,000 hotspots detected in the region. The region meaning uh, sort of Thailand and the surrounding countries. And almost 6,000 hotspots were detected in neighbouring countries on Sunday, with at least 4,000 of them located in Cambodia. And Cambodia had the highest number, just over 4,000, then Myanmar nearly 1,000, Laos at 622, Vietnam at 166. The images also showed that 601 hotspots were detected in Thailand. Of them, 169 were in forest areas. Kanchanaburi topped the provinces with 110 hotspots visible by satellite. And the Pollution Control Department said that at 7 a.m. yesterday that the PM 2.5 levels had exceeded the safe threshold nationwide, except in some parts of the south. Regarding cross-border pollution mitigation, the president of the Thailand Environmental Institute said PM 2.5 pollution has been around for a long time and the problem requires an integrated solution, including a ban on slash and burn farming that must involve cooperation from neighbouring countries. Well, we all know that that has to happen, and that's a lot of talking ahead. But this year, the problem is just as bad as it was last year, if not worse, and we've still got a few months to go. So the people up in the central and north of Thailand are suffering once again, despite all the chatter and talk. But looks like there's another angle to this. We go to ThaiPBSWorld.com. The world's biggest flying lab comes to Asia on air pollution mission. And the story from the Philippines, NASA has kicked off a series of C, you'll have to decide what C stands for there, in an ambitious mission to improve the models that help to forecast and fight air pollution. And starting this week in the Philippines, the US agency's DC-8, a good old aircraft there, is flying up to eight hours at a time, sometimes just 15 metres from the ground, to swoop up air particles for study. And air quality forecasting relies on readings from ground stations as well as satellites, but both methods are limited in their ability to see how pollutants are spread in the air, according to experts. And packed with dozens of highly sensitive instruments, the NASA lab has flown twice so far this week in a figure eight pattern over some of the most densely populated areas of the Philippines, including the capital region, according to the tracking site Flight Aware. So data and information is the most important thing as we try and figure out exactly what these pollutants are and then finding ways and negotiating to try and stop them in the future. Uh, Speaking of flying, this incident last week, ThaiPBSWorld.com reporting Canadian who opened plane door before takeoff self-harms in cell. And the Canadian man in Chiang Mai, who was arrested after opening the door of a Thai Airways aircraft as it was about to take off on Wednesday night, has been taken to Chiang Mai Neurological Hospital for assessment after he hurt himself in his cell. And a 40-year-old Wong Sai Hyong bashed his head against the iron bars of the detention cell and bit the back of his own hand. And police officers subdued him, had him taken to the Neurological Hospital for psychological assessment. According to other passengers, Wong appeared to be in a state of panic when he opened the door, causing the automatic deployment of the evacuation slide and forcing the pilot to stop the plane. So that man, a difficult road ahead of him and some big bills to pay, I would have thought. We go from Chiang Mai to Pattaya now and, hmm, years of overstay. So you guess how many years this person has overstayed. We'll find out in a moment. This reported in the PatiaNews.com. Wanted Russian man arrested near Patia. So how many years? Here we go. A wanted Russian man with an Interpol red notice and 10 years of overstay, who used to stay in Phuket, was arrested in Banglamung, not far from Patia. He was a 34-year-old Mr. Mick, would have been 24 years old when he arrived in uh, Thailand originally. A Russian national was arrested in the front of a house in Nong Pru. Uh, he faces charges of overstay 2,971 days. And the arrest came after, in December of last year, Chombri Immigration was notified from a tip by a concerned citizen that Mr Mick, who had previously lived in Phuket, was now in Chombri. 
and had been overstaying, according to the tip, for many, many years. Chombury officers also found that the suspect is wanted in his own country on an Interpol red notice and was allegedly involved in illegal drugs. And then down the bottom, Mr Mick did not speak to the press or release a statement, I'm hardly surprised. Uh, also in Patia and reported by the thepatianews.com, Patia man seeks medical help for ring stuck around his genitals. Uh, the headline's horrific enough, but amazingly there was somebody there taking photos. Uh, well, blurred out I might add, but if I was the poor man, I'd be saying get the f- out of here with that camera. And a 38-year-old Thai man sought medical attention on Friday after an aluminium ring became lodged around his genitals. Uh, after attempting to follow a social media trend, what? He'd seen a clip online suggesting that wearing an aluminium ring in the genital area could improve sexual stamina. Now, when watching social media, I often get some great ideas for uh, cooking recipes with a, a very few number of ingredients, and there are a few other really good ideas on the internet. This is probably not one of them unless you're doing it under some sort of supervision. Motivated by this information, he purchased a ring online only to discover he couldn't remove it after wearing it. Unable to remove the ring themselves, hospital staff contacted the Sawang, Sawang uh, Boriboon Tamasatan Foundation for their specialised equipment and expertise. In other words, they confront this particular problem more often than we probably know about. And after approximately 20 minutes, the rescue team successfully removed the ring. Thankfully, the victim did not experience any lasting injuries, except a dented pride. So good luck to that man in the future. I bet that ring's found its way into the rubbish bin. So thanks for watching today. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around Thailand. Big thanks to our sponsor, Five Star Marine, and you can contact them at fivestarmarinephuket.com. There's a link in the description if you'd like a special deal for TNT viewers. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for all the views over the weekend. We'll see you tomorrow.